What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're gonna to start to learn data analysis with Python. All right, in this video, we're gonna to start to learn data analysis for Python. I'm gonna show you how to install all the tools that we're gonna need. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the thumbs up button below, subscribe to the channel and check out Konami.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've been getting requests for this for quite some time, months and months, probably a couple of years. Data analysis for Python, probably one of the most popular things going right now. You can do so much with it. There's so many job opportunities, and there's just a lot of really cool stuff you can do with data analysis. And it's a tricky subject. It's going to take us a long time to go through all of this. And... You know, it's just something you're gonna have to dive in and learn a bunch of different things for, but I'm gonna walk you through it and it's gonna be cool. So in this video, we're gonna download and install all the tools that we're gonna need. And we're gonna need a bunch of things. It's actually not that hard to set up all these tools. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So the first thing we need is, well, obviously you need Python and you need a, a terminal to run commands, right? We'll talk about that in just a second. But the main tool we need is Jupyter Notebooks. And this is just gonna make it a lot easier for us to learn data analysis visually and uh, stuff like that. So in this video, we're gonna download and install that. I'll show you how to work with that. And there's some other Python libraries we're, that we're gonna need in order to do data analysis, you know, matplotlib, numpy, pandas, all these things. And we'll install all of those as well in this video. So obviously the first thing you need is Python, right? You have to install Python. If you don't know how to install Python, you're probably in the wrong place, uh, but that's okay. Just go to Google and type in Python and you see python.org is the website, and then just click on the downloads, and whatever the latest version is, click this, and this will download it to your computer, and you can run that file and install Python. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I've done it in many other videos throughout my channel. You can go uh, Google that if you need. The only thing I will mention is when you do install Python, especially for Windows, on the very first screen or the second screen, there's gonna be a little box at the bottom that says add Python to path. It's unchecked by default. You definitely want to have that checked. So, you know, click the little box to check that. Otherwise, just take all the defaults and it's pretty simple. Next, we need a terminal, something to run commands on. We're not gonna run a lot of commands. We just need to turn on Jupyter Notebooks. So we need a, a terminal for that. You can use your Windows command prompt or your PowerShell. Uh, the commands are gonna be slightly different for setting up a virtual environment, but you can use those. I like git bash. It's at git-scm.com. I click on this and just download whatever the latest version is. Now this comes in Windows, Mac, or Linux. If you have a Mac, you can use the terminal, Linux too, if you have a Mac or Linux, you can use the terminal that comes with your computer. Git bash is very similar, but it's not quite the same. So if you just wanna follow along with my videos, download this for Mac or Linux and uh, give it a try. Like I said, we're not gonna be using this a whole lot because we just need to run one command basically. Well, a couple of commands. And after that, we won't really need to use it much at all, if at all. So it's not a big deal. If you don't know how to install this, this one's a little bit more complicated. There's like 20 screens you have to click through. Just click next on every single one of them. You're gonna wanna read through and, and change some things on some of them, don't. Just take the defaults for every single screen and just keep cl clicking next. If you want a video, I've got, I don't know, probably half a dozen videos on my channel installing Git Bash with different courses. Uh, you could just search for Git Bash and you'll see a video of me installing it. I'm not gonna do that in this video. So finally, we need Jupyter Notebooks. I can never spell this right, J-U-P-Y-T-E-R. And it's at jupyter.org. And this is it. Now, to install this, there's a few different ways to do it. You can install it with Conda, this is Anaconda. This is Conda, Anaconda, whatever, is a Python, data analysis, big data thing, right? And a lot of people, when they wanna do data analysis with Python, they start right out downloading this Conda, Anaconda. And yeah, see, it says down, even says down here, we strongly recommend uh, installing Anaconda. And it's an entire distribution of Python. And it comes with all the things already. It comes with matplotlib, it comes with numpy, it comes with pandas, all the things, right? But we really don't need all that stuff. We need we do need that stuff, and we're gonna install them uh, 
ourselves manually. And you'll see it's very easy to do that. So we don't have to necessarily download some crazy Python distribution that comes with all these tools. And you're like, yeah, but I want to do that. Don't because if you do anything else with Python, it's gonna the distribution that comes with it is, I don't know, it's not bad, but it will, how to say it, you'll get weird errors sometimes, it'll conflict with things sometimes. It's just kind of a hassle. I'm getting emails from students every single day saying my Python's not working for your course on, you know, whatever, Django, for instance. And I, I come to find out they're running Anaconda instead of just regular Python and it conflicts. So there's just no need to do that. So we're just going to use regular old Python and we're going to install manually all the different packages we need. And it's really simple. And I'll show you in this video. So we can come up here and just we want to pip install Jupyter Labs. We just punch this into the command prompt. But before we do that, we need to set some stuff up. So I'm going to open up our git bash terminal. And this is the git bash terminal I suggest you download. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can use the terminal that comes with that. But again, it's going to be a little bit different. So the first thing we need to do is create a directory where we're going to house all of our project files and all this stuff. So I'm just going to type mkdir. And I want this in the C drive. And let's call this um, da data analysis. Yeah, sure. Okay, now we need to change into that directory. So we type in cd change directory, and then just type the directory again, da. So you can see right here, now we're in that directory, right? If we type ls, there's nothing in there. So the first thing we want to do is create a virtual environment. You don't have to do this, but we're going to be installing all kinds of stuff. And I like to keep that kind of in a little walled garden. All those things we install, we want to keep them in a virtual environment in case something goes wrong, in case we need to use a different version of one of them later on for something else. Uh, it's just sort of best practices. So I'm going to create a, um, a virtual environment. So to do that, you just type in Python slash or dash M and then VENV. And then let's name it. I'm just going to call it vert for virtual. Or let's just call it virtual, whatever. So this takes a second to spin up. And this VENV is short for virtual environment, it comes with Python already. All right, so now if we type in ls, we see we have this virtual directory. So to turn on our virtual environment, we've created it, now we need to turn it on. So to do that, we type in source, and then virtual, and then scripts, and then activate. So this scripts directory is in our virtual directory. And inside of that directory, there's a file called activate. It activates our virtual environment, turns it on. And you see when we do that, now this virtual thing appears above the command prompt every time we hit enter or issue a command or something. Now, if you're on a Mac or Linux, this command is going to be a little different. It's going to be source, I think, bin slash activate. If you're on Windows using command prompt or the PowerShell, Boy, I can't remember what the command is. You'll just have to Google it or download Git Bash. So now our virtual environment has been turned on. So let's go pip freeze. And what this does is it tells us what's installed Python wise in our virtual environment. And you can see there's nothing there. It's just nothing, right? So we need to install some things. So let's start off. Let's pull this back up and let's start by installing Jupyter Lab. So we're going to right click copy. And I'm just going to come in here and click paste. And so it's downloading it and installing it for us. If you're on Mac or Linux, you might have to type pip3 instead of just pip. Um, so pip3 install Jupyter Labs, but um, you, you might not have to do that. It just depends on what version of Python you have installed and things like that. If you have an older version of Python installed, which a lot of Mac computers do, like Python 2, then you have to designate which pip you want to use, pip3. So anyway, let's wait for this to finish. All right, so now if we type clear, now if we go pip freeze, we can see there's a whole bunch of stuff that's been installed. And we can look through here. There's nothing all that interesting to us, but there's a bunch of stuff here. So that's cool. All right, so let's clear the screen. Now, there's a bunch of different programs we need to also install in order to do any type of data analysis with Python. Now, these are the things that come with Anaconda. We're going to install them now manually, and I'm going to show you just how ridiculously easy it is to install all these. It's the same as installing Jupyter Notebooks. We just go pip install NumPy. And I'm not going to talk about what all these things are in this video. We'll start talking about them in the next video. NumPy allows us to do uh, sort of linear algebra 
and create big arrays, which are slightly different than Python arrays. And we'll see what that's all about coming up. So that's installed. Next, we want matplotlib. So pip install matplotlib. Now you could probably do all these at once with one command by putting a comma, and then matplotlib, and then comma, numpy, comma. But I'm just going to do them separately, just so it's not confusing. Then pip install, and we want pandas. Pandas is important. We'll be using this a lot. Okay, these are the main things we need. Now, just for good measure, I'm going to pip install, let's see, scikit-learn. And this is just a, a science thing. And it's also going to install something called scipy for us, which allows us to do some science, sciencey stuff that allows us to do other data analysis stuff we might want to do. So this is going to take a minute because there's several things that it's installing. Okay, and then finally, we're going to pip install Seaborn. And this is sort of like matplotlib, only better. Uh, it allows us to make graphs and charts and things that are nicer looking than the matplotlib charts and stuff. So we may use this, we may not, I haven't really decided. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. And that's pretty much it, right? That's all we need to do. We are installed with everything we need to do data analysis with Python. And we didn't have to install some crazy anaconda version of Python that will possibly mess us up for doing other Python things in the future and conflict with other things and all this stuff. So that was incredibly easy. I don't see any reason to ever install or download Anaconda just because that was incredibly easy. So, okay, we are now uh, we, in our virtual environment here. We're in our DA data analysis directory. That was probably a bad name, but I'm, it's Monday morning. I'm feeling kind of lazy. So DA it is. Now, we've got Jupyter Notebook installed. How do we actually use it? Well, it's really easy just from within this directory. And when your virtual environment is turned on, you just type in the command Jupyter and then notebook. Did I spell it right? Jup nope, I did not. Jupiter. Jupiter. It's a weird word. I don't know why they, I don't know why they use the Y instead of an I, because it's cool, but it always confuses me. So Jupiter and also PY stands for Python, Jupython Tur, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So you hit enter. This is gonna fire up our thing, and boom, you can see it launched a web browser for me right away, right? So if we come back here and look, we, it'll show us we can go to localhost colon 8888. And 8888 is the port that your Jupyter Notebook will run on from now on, right? So this has to keep running this terminal. And you can see the command prompt has disappeared and the cursor is just sort of blinking, right? And that tells us it's every time we run a command on Jupyter Notebook, it will run in this terminal here and it'll show up right here. So if we get errors or something, we can come back and look and see what the error is. But the point is this has to keep running, right? So you have to just keep this terminal running. If you close this terminal, then this web browser with our Jupyter Notebook won't work anymore. So you have to keep that running, just keep that in mind. So let's come over here to new and let's create a new notebook. And it's been called, let's see, nothing so far, it's untitled. So if I click on here, we can just go uh, testing, I don't know. Hit enter. Now this thing is called testing. Oops. And I think it's it auto saves or if not, you can come up here and well, Yeah, unsaved changes. So we need to save this. So let's go file, save as, and let's just type in testing, the name of it. Oh, already exists. So, okay, it has been can't saved for us. So we don't need to do anything. It will save things from time to time. And here's Jupyter Notebooks. It just works. And if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, this just allows us to run Python commands in our web browser. So I can just go any Python command, two plus two. If I hit enter, it goes down to the next line. If I hit shift enter, it will run that command and you can see four. So I can go something like print John Elder, shift enter, boom, it prints out John Elder, right? So any sort of Python commands or programs you, you care to make, you can do. So, uh, you know, you can, you can do multiple line programs and hit enter, I get an error because, you know, that was an actual Python. Uh, 
but that's cool. And you can come back here and, you know, three plus two, change this and run it again, and boom, we get five. So there's all kinds of stuff that's cool about Jupyter Notebooks, and we're going to get into this probably in the next video, different things we can do, and uh, how to start using the data analysis stuff we just installed with Jupyter Notebooks, but we'll get into that later. I think in this video, I'm going to stop right about here because we've installed all the tools that we need, Jupyter Notebooks. And like I said earlier, we need this terminal, right? But we're pretty much done with it. We're not going to use it for much anything from now on, unless there's some weird thing we need to install. If there's, there could be another Python module for data analysis that I forgot to install just now. If, if that's the case, we'll, you know, install it just like we did earlier. But for the most part, we're just going to keep it like this. And anytime you want to use your Jupyter Notebook, you just come in here, CD into your DA directory or whatever directory you created, turn on your virtual environment. If you don't turn on your virtual environment, the Jupyter Notebooks won't work because we only installed the Jupyter Notebooks inside of our virtual environment. That's the beauty of the virtual environment. If you, for instance, if I hit control C to break out of here, you can see it's shutting down and I type in, well, let's clear the screen. I type in deactivate and then I pip freeze. Well, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff, but there's no Jupyter Notebooks listed, right? It's alphabetical, so H, I, J, K. So it would be right here, and there isn't one. So, you know, we need to always be in our virtual environment. I'm scrolling back to find the command. So source virtual scripts activate, boom. Now we're in our virtual environment. Now, if we pip freeze, we'll see that our Jupyter stuff is in fact listed, and we can use it again by running the Jupyter Jupyter Notebook command, and boom, it starts right up. And then here we see there's that testing file. Notice it ends in IPYNB. Those are what the files for Jupyter Notebook end as. They're not .py files. They're .IPYNB files. And if we, whoops, and if we click on it, it opens back up. And all of our stuff that we did in the last video or in the last, you know, few minutes is still here because it's been saved, it auto saved it, you see. And uh, very cool. So that's Jupyter Notebooks. That's all the stuff we need to start doing data analysis. In the next few videos, we'll actually get into probably start learning NumPy first. That's kind of the first thing you always want to learn. But we'll look at that coming up. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. You pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 60,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeNumi.com, and I'll see you in the next video.